All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is actually signing the alphabet. Okay, so some of you that are watching tonight might already know the alphabet in ASL and that's totally awesome, but we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the parameters of using your hands when you sign and the first one has to do with your dominancy. Which hand do you consider to be your dominant hand? Are you right handed or are you left handed? So whichever hand you tend to eat with, brush your teeth with, brush your hair with, whatever, that's the hand that we would consider to be your dominant hand. So when you're learning ASL, the importance of understanding which hand to use comes into play, especially when you are finger spelling. Finger spelling has to do with the individual letter. Like if I'm going to spell the word cat, maybe you don't know the sign for cat. So if you don't know the sign for a word, if you know the alphabet, you would be able to finger spell the word cat to be able to still get your message across. So understanding and learning the 26 letters of the alphabet is incredibly important because if you know that, you could at least struggle your way through a conversation, even if you had to finger spell each and every English word. So we're gonna go ahead and start with learning our alphabet. Usually when I have a class that I can look at, I take a look at all your hands while we're going. So I do encourage you, even though I can't see you, I would love for you to pick up your hands and sign with me. So if you're right-handed, you're going to use your right hand. And just so you know which is which on mine, my right hand, I only wear just a tiny little ring. So you can see one ring. And I don't have any jewelry or anything on my right hand. My left hand, I have a, a tattoo on my left hand and I also wear my wedding ring. So that's a really good no way to know which is which. My left hand is also always closest to my little I love you picture that is behind me. So hopefully that will help you get the orientation correct on which hand I'm using. So starting with the letter A, uh, your palm orientation is always going to face towards the people or person that you're signing with. So I have my letter A here. If you glance over and look at your hand, I have a lot of students that tell me this looks like an apple. So if you can think of the shape of an apple with its little stem sticking out, that's a good way to make sure you're forming the letter A correctly. So this is the letter A. Next is B. So your fingers are going to be together. If you have them open, make sure that's the number four. So make sure you put them together. Letter B. C, and that just looks like a C. The D, this is one of the most commonly mistaken signs between D and F. So what I can tell you about D, you can literally see through it like the number or like the letter D. So you have your number one finger sticking up and then you wanna have a circle. So when you turn it sideways, it looks like the letter D. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D. The letter E, you are gonna have all of your fingers down like this. Now, some people touch it. Some people leave a little bit of space right here. I usually say for people signing online and since, you know, last year with this whole pandemic and everything, I think we're coming up on a year since we've really had to go online. Um, a lot of people tend to start leaving their hand a little more space than touching because online, sometimes it's a little hard to be able to uh, tell whether this is an O or an E online. So some people like to make sure they leave that little bit of distinction, okay? All right, so we have A, B, C, D, E. The letter F, if you're a football fan, that's like third down in football, okay? This is your letter F. So a lot of students like to have that memory aid of F is like third down in football. So if you can think football, F, that might help you to remember that sign, okay? Then we have G. The letter G, I'm literally taking this hand shape like this and turning it sideways. So we have G. After G comes H, I. And to make a J, you're just going to draw a J in the air. Okay, just a J. After J comes the letter K. So you're going to put your number one finger up, put your middle finger straight out, and your thumb kind of rest. I'll get a little closer to the camera so you can see. Kind of rest right here like this. So that looks like the letter while we're here, if you flip this upside down, when we get to it, that's the letter P. So all K is, we have a K and then all P is, is just an upside down K. Okay, so we have K. After K comes L. Now I believe in having fun when we learn. Okay, so all of you just do this with me. I can't see you, so it won't be as much fun for me, but you should have fun. This is the sign for loser. So a lot of people really like to learn that sign. So if you put this right up here on your forehead, just like the, the song from the 90s, this is the sign for loser. A lot of people think that's fun to learn. So I always teach it in the alphabet. So after L, you have the letter M. 
So with M, you're going to take your three fingers, your um, index, your middle, and your ring finger. Some people curl it all the way over like that. Some people leave it straight out. Okay. It's literally just a preference. There's not one that's right or wrong. So whatever is more comfortable for you. After M comes in, so you're just going to take away your ring finger and the same thing, either in or in. Okay. I want you to think of the difference, like with E or E or M or M. I want you to think of that as kind of like an accent. Now y'all can laugh at me. I can't hear you laugh at me, so it's okay. I think of this as really Southern people saying y'all, y'all versus you guys. Okay, so if you can kind of think of it a little bit like an accent, everybody's going to have a little bit of variation in what they do with their hand. And that's the way I like to think of it. It's kind of like a dialect or a little bit of an accent variation. So not everybody makes this perfect M or M. Some people might have arthritis and their M looks more like this. So that's why it's important to practice and sign with a lot of people. Okay, so we have M, N, O, which just looks like an O. After O comes that upside down K, so we have P. Then we have a Q, which is just an upside down G, so make the G and flip it upside down. After Q comes R, like you're making a promise. Then we have the letter S, where you're just gonna put your thumb, like make like a fist, so it looks just like that. After S comes T, I always think of my grandfather with the sign like I got your nose. So if you had a grandfather that would grab your nose and pretend to steal it, that's a good way to remember it. T. Okay. After T comes U. And for a V, you're simply going to split it, which also looks like the number two. Okay. So you have U, V. Then you have a W. To make an X, you're just going to take your index finger and bend it. So that's X. Then we have a Y. And to make a Z, you're going to take your index finger and simply draw a Z in the air. 